Let's take out our Bibles. Turn to Isaiah chapter 42 and Nehemiah chapter 8 and 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and Luke chapter 24. Well, let's start in Isaiah. Isaiah this morning. Isaiah chapter number 42. Good to have you here. Everybody else. Joy, joy that we have in the Lord. You know, we're just here temporarily, aren't we? Right. It's the next time that is eternal. All of eternity is dependent on what you do now. There's no changing after you pass away, after you leave this world, after you die, or put it on the after a person dies, there's no changing their location. All of eternity is dependent on what you do now. Now. Make sure you get it right now. Heavenly Father, help me as I preach this morning on the resurrection of Jesus Christ and, and how to celebrate it. How we should be celebrating this wonderful one-time eternal event that changes everything. Changes everything because of who it was and what he did for us. So Lord, help me to preach this morning. Help me to remember the different things I want to bring up and may it be applied by the Holy Spirit of God to our hearts and our minds of everyone here today. Especially those that still need to be born again, still aren't saved. They might believe in Jesus, but it's not a biblical definition of believing because it doesn't amount the will. They're not obeying. Believing without obeying is not the Bible. So Lord, help me as I preach this morning. In Jesus' name I pray and ask it. Amen. 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 Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, I talk about here that the glory of the Lord and where it belongs. Isaiah, chapter 42, beginning of verse 8. It says there, I am the Lord. How many times is that said in the Old Testament? You know, I don't know exactly, but I know it's thousands of times. I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. People are giving his glory to all, all kinds of things in this world. But he says, my glory I will not give to another. Watch that glory thing. Who are you glorying in? Who are you glorying about? Where is your pride? What are you boasting? What are you bragging about? What are you glorying in? The Lord says, I deserve all this kind of glory. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven images. Amen. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. That's talking about prophecy. The Lord says, I can tell you things before they're going to happen. That's right. What other God could do that? Verse 10, so-called God, that is. Yes. Verse 10, sing unto the Lord a new song, that's good, and his praise from the end of the earth. He that go down to the sea and all that is there in the isles and the inhabitants thereof, let all the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voices, the villages that Kedar God inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rocks sing, let them shout from the top of the mountains, let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise to the islands. Amen. That means worldwide. The islands means going out throughout the, the world, the whole world. I want to talk about that, how to celebrate Christ's resurrection. First of all, we're not going to, so we don't celebrate it like the world does, like the world does. They celebrate the wrong things, first of all. They celebrate uh, sporting things. They celebrate things in this world. They celebrate Hollywood. They, you know, this world loves to give, its, give itself trophies and awards. Have you noticed that? This world loves to do that, loves to award itself. Loves to give trophies and and said recognition on things in this world. They celebrate the wrong things. They celebrate, they certainly celebrate the wrong people. They should be celebrating Christians. If a person is not a Christian, don't use them as your example or your hero. If they're not a Christian, don't use them as your example or as heroes. Some people in this world can do some good things, but be careful of that. You don't want just good things. You want the best things. The best things are God things. But they celebrate the wrong people. 
they talk about sports athletes. They talk about even, even well, even politicians somewhat. Be careful in that area too. That's right. They celebrate the wrong people. That's right. They follow the wrong people. Yep. They glorify the wrong people. Amen. They need to glorify the right people, the ones that are living for the Lord. Amen. So this world, not like the world, which celebrates the wrong things, the wrong people, in the wrong way. Everything is celebrated, it seems like. Everything is celebrated in this world with alcohol. Right. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Oh, my. What, you know, the Bible says they're fools to do that. That's right. The alcohol. It says, look not upon the wine at yep. the last when they give it to sell right. At the last, it singeth like an adder and biteth like a serpent. Yep. Stay away from alcohol. Amen. 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 What about a little bit of alcohol? If a lot of alcohol is long, wrong, a little bit of alcohol is is wrong because it's lead, leading up to more and more alcohol. Right, right. And Amen. some people can't have a, they will have a problem with it. Some will become addicted, but some will not. I know that true also. But what kind of example are you setting? That's right. Stay away from alcohol. Amen. Why? Because Pastor Andy said so. <laughs> I like something even better. Because the Bible says Amen. so. They celebrate the wrong way. Let's go out and have some beer. That's uh, what, what they, what's the what's the uh, wine they uh, they used to celebrate? Oh, champagne. champagne. Thank you, champagne. Uh, let's go buy some champagne. Did you know champagne is alcohol too? Yep. So they celebrate the wrong things, and the wrong people, in the wrong ways, yep. and with the wrong motives for the wrong reason. The Bible says we should not be conformed to this world. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 9 in the New Testament says, Be not conformed to this world. In other words, don't celebrate like the world celebrates. That's a conformity to the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 25. And every man, I'm sorry, verse 9, yeah, that's the one I, I don't know. Let's see, I'm getting mixed up. I want Romans chapter 12. I'm sorry. See, I'm all excited this morning. It's your fault that I'm doing it. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. People say, I want to die for the Lord. Well, you ought to live for the Lord. Amen. A living sacrifice, holy. Yeah. There's a four-letter word people don't like. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's just reasonable, it just makes sense. Now verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. In what way? In ways they celebrate. Yeah. Don't celebrate the same way the world does. And be not conformed to this world in celebration, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You learn things right from the Bible. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect, perfect will of God. So the good, acceptable, perfect will of God is not to be conformed to this world. The good and acceptable, perfect will of God is contrary to the things in this world. Don't be conformed to this world in how they celebrate. You know, everybody's becoming something. If we live a certain way, if we do a certain thing, we become that more and more all the time. Uh, our consequences of our lives depend on what we are doing, and we're becoming more and more something, uh, some way. And I, I ask you this morning, what direction are we headed today? What direction am I headed today, personally, individually? And what direction are you headed today, personally and in individually? Which direction are you going? Because you're going to become more and more and more like that in the direction that you're going. Which way are you going? Which way are you headed today? Be careful of that. You want to head in the right direction so you become more and more like the right thing today. Don't celebrate like the world. They celebrate the wrong things and the wrong people and the wrong way and the wrong motives. Some people say, well, I know some people in this world, they're making $40 million a year. Good for them. They're not going to keep it after they pass away. The more you have in this world, the more you leave behind when you leave this world. That's all it turns out to be. Anyways, so first of all, how to celebrate Christ's resurrection not by like the world does. Amen. Not like the world does. Number two, celebrate by showing joy. Amen. 
there ought to be a joy in our lives because of this. Psalm, turn back to Psalm now, chapter 35. Yeah, what a joy it is to be in church. Amen. Psalm 35. Boy, we're really living in confusing times, though, aren't we? Yes, sir. How do we handle this? What do we do here at church? We want to have church. Church is important. It's, it's not just watching someone on TV. That's right. not church. Right. Yeah. It's just coming right. with other believers and hearing yeah. the gospel preach and personally being here. I, I guess now what they're doing on some of these programs, they... They don't have real life people in the audience anymore. You've probably seen this. I have seen it in a few different things. They have what television screens and they have people on television screens in the audience. And they have like hundreds, maybe thousands of these screens. That's their audience now. That's weird. That is really weird. I like to be somewhere when I'm going somewhere. I want to be in church. I want to be in church where other people are there. I want to be in church where I see a pastor and a preacher. I want to be able to sing in a church with other people. And there's a joy, there's a joy in that. Psalm chapter 35, verse 26. Psalm 35, verse 26. I hope I have the right reference here. I better have it. Yeah, this is a good one. Psalm 35, 26 and 27. Memorize these verses. This will help you spiritually. Psalm 35, verse 26. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion. And that's what's happening in our world. There's a great confusion. Together that rejoice. Uh, brought to confusion together. That rejoice of mine hurt. Uh, let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. You need to be against the right people. You need to be for the right people. Now look at verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Don't forget the last part of verse 27 there. Which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. We're talking about the right kind of prosperity there. But that's what the Bible says there. Now, turn to Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8. We're going to talk more about joy here. Joy. Nehemiah chapter 8, and then put something there, Nehemiah chapter 8, because we're going to be here a couple of times during the message this morning. Nehemiah chapter 8. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Psalm of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Isaiah, Joel, 8, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nehemiah, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. But you're at the beginning of that list. <laughs> Nehemiah, Nehemiah. Also, we need to understand there's a difference. There's a line that people cross. Article going out in this month's newsletter, which you'll be getting in the mail, and we're going to put the labels on tonight. In the newsletter, there's a difference between joy or frivolity. The scriptures are not geared to frivolity, frivolous. And the tone of the gospel, while it's indeed good news, is good news of a feast, not a frolic. This next part is so important, friends. Listen to this. No great revival ever started in fun making. Good. Let that sink in this morning. Now, we, have, we enjoy our fellowship at church. We, we joke around. We have joy in our lives. Absolutely. But no great revival ever started in fun making, uh, nor ran on such fuel. Again, joy in a church crosses the line, too. There is joy aplenty. But it is heavenly joy of the Spirit of God and not the silly antics of human clowning Good. under religious auspices. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Let me say that again. There is joy of plenty, but the heavenly joy of the Spirit of God and not the silly antics of human clowning under religious auspices. Vance Havner said that. Years ago. If anybody had a sense of humor, Vance Havner had a sense of humor. I know some of the different things he said. Humor said he had a sense of humor, good sense of humor, and he used it in his preaching too. But not like we see even today. People, they're almost like clowns, Christian clowns, entertaining people. They're like stand up comedians. And they think that's being spiritual. No revival ever began that way. 
Revival begins with God's people humbling themselves before the Lord Jesus Christ and confessing their sins and making things right in their life. And we need revival until they don't. Yes, sir. We don't need more clown, Christian clowns. We don't need a stand up comedians in our church. Right. And I, a certain amount of uh, uh, humor is good. I think that's right. It's good. Elijah used it when he was criticizing the prophets of Baal and criticizing their God. He used some humor there. But be careful again. There's that line again. I keep talking about there's that line. Don't cross that line. It just becomes frivolous and people lose respect for Christianity. That's how you have to judge it. Will people lose respect for Christianity because of this? Or will they see Christianity as just one big joke? Something to just laugh about. I don't like that. I don't agree with that. But I have a joy. I have a joy in my life because of what the Lord's done. Again, Nehemiah, Nehemiah here, chapter 8 and verse number 10. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord. I like this. This day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry. Now come to the church with a joy. People come to church, they've got heartaches. You've got heartaches. I'm sure there's several people this morning that have some very serious heartaches in their life. Okay, yet the Lord knows about that. Pray about that. But when you think about the Lord, may there come a joy in your life thinking about the Lord. See, for this day, and this is one of special day resurrection Sunday, for this day is holy. Holy means separate unto the Lord, sinless unto the Lord. Unto the Lord, neither be sorry. Don't walk in here with a, a frown on your face. Or you've got pain in your life. You've got difficulty. Yes, we all do. We all do. And the Lord understands that too. Yes. The Bible says to mourn with them that mourn. Yes. But then it says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm -hmm. So the Levites, still all the people say, hold your peace. For the day is holy, neither be ye grieved. Don't be sorry. Don't be grieved. Don't go to church with that kind of attitude. Yes, you've got personal problems. Yes, yes uh, they're, they're bringing you down. You're praying about that all the time. And God right now doesn't seem to be answering, or maybe his answer is no for right now or not yet. I don't know, but he will answer. But you're in the house of the Lord. We're celebrating the greatest event in history ever by far. Amen. Amen. Right. Throughout eternity, almost everything that's happened today did happen or will happen yet before the second coming. Most of that's going to be forgotten. Mm -hmm. It's going to be forgotten. But not the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for us. That's not going to be forgotten a million years from now. That's still going to be remembered. So celebrate by showing joy. Be happy in church. Don't be down about things. Don't be discouraged or don't be defeated about things. Uh, like I said, I know you've got your problems. We all do. Everyone does. Many people do. But have a joy the Lord that overcomes those problems. Amen. You know there's a battle in ourselves over our emotions and our feelings. You think about one thing, you get discouraged and down and depressed. But you think about something else, and it can encourage you, give you joy in your life, in spite of the other things. There's this crazy battle going on inside of every one of us, isn't there? What does the Bible say? What sort of things are true? What sort of things are just? What sort of honest? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are good before? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, they are these things. See? The thought life. Watch yourself there. But there's joy. Celebrate by showing joy about the resurrection. I think our church was happier today than I've seen it for months, maybe even a year already. There's a joy in our church this morning that's more than the usual. And that's a great, great thing. Because we're happy about something. We're joyful about something. What the Lord has done for us and what that means. Another way we celebrate is we celebrate with other people. With others. Nehemiah there talks about it, but I'm going to turn now, if you would, to a couple of references, and they're both in the in Psalms. Psalm chapter 34, verse 3, the first one. Psalm 34, verse 3. There'll be a, 
a rejoicing, a joy, but also with other people. You know, in heaven, we're all going to be gathered together around the throne there. Psalm chapter 34, verse 3 says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name. And that next word is very important. Together. Together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Every Christian has their quiet time. Every Christian should have their prayer closet when they pray by themselves. And they pray. Every Christian should have a time of reading the Bible by themselves. Yes. But there's also times we need to come together. We need to encourage each other. It even, even says in the Bible, Jesus Christ died for the church. The church. I mean, he died for this organization, the local church as we believe it today. That's one of the meanings and definitions of that. Together, together. You know, individuals are not an army. It takes many to be an army. Individuals are not a choir. That's a solo. A choir is made up of many members together. A church is not made up of, in, uh, it's not just an individual. You say, I have the church inside of me. No, you don't. No, you don't. This is church, what we're doing this morning. When we get together and worship the Lord. Amen. That's what church is. You ought to have your personal time. You ought to have your personal time of prayer. God right? will absolutely positively. But we need our times together. Turn off you with the Psalm chapter 122, verse 1. This verse, a lot of you know already. You haven't memorized, I'm sure. I'm going to read it through twice this morning. Psalm chapter 122 and verse 1. I'm going to read it through twice. The second time, I'm going to emphasize something. The first time, I'm just going to read it through. Psalm 122, verse 1 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's what it says. Now, let me emphasize something as I read it through again. I was glad when they said unto me, let us Go into the house of the Lord. I, me, they, us. Isn't that curious? The way that works. When me becomes us. That's what happens in verse 1. When me becomes us. I was glad. My self. When they, they said, come on into church. When they said unto me, let us, us all together go unto, unto the house of the Lord. See? Together, together we worship together. Nobody's a church by themselves. Right. Uh, nobody's an army by themselves. Nobody's a choir by themselves. But celebrate with others. One of the purposes for a church is to get together. One of the purposes of a church is to sing together. We're talking about that here in just a minute. But Psalm chapter 1, verse 22, verse 1 says, They said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Together. So important. Now, a little side note here. Uh, I know the virus problem, the COVID is a problem, how we should handle it. I, I'm still not sure exactly how we should handle that. Uh, I've left it up to the individuals, how, what do you want to do uh, in preparing, in coming out to church, what do you want to do or not do, whatever. I've left it to the individuals. I believe that's Romans chapter 14 there. A letter in what man be fully convinced and is persuaded in his own mind. And so that's what I think is applied here. And so everybody can do whatever they want, and nobody should criticize them because they're not doing what they want, but we ought to be able to understand and realize we want to get together, though. That's right. We want to meet together as a church. Amen. Even if the... Now, let me just go on the next one. Just say that. Uh, even if there's some problems involved, even if there's difficulties involved, and people see it differently. That's all right. We still need to meet together as a church. Amen. It's yeah. not the same as watching TV. Yeah, it's not the same as watching yeah. or listening to us on the radio. Right. Uh, it's not even the same. That we're here. Amen. You're looking at me. Yep. You can see what I look like. That's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, good. Some people think that's a good thing. Great. I mean, we're here one on one, personally, relating to each other. Why do you think Jesus Christ started the church? That's right. You know we needed it. He knows it's good for us. That's good. He knows it's a for us. We need to serve him this way. Amen. That's why. Oh. 
Celebrate with others, not by yourself. There's time for your personal Bible study, person for absolutely positively. I encourage that. Maybe we don't do that as much as we even should. Mm-hmm. I encourage that. But with others, celebrate with others. There's no one man army, there's no one man choir, there's no one man church. Right. It's together we do that. Mm. The next thing we celebrate, we celebrate verbally Amen. by singing. Uh, since we're in Psalm, turn back to Psalm 81, verse 1. Psalm 81, verse 1. And we'll be in Psalm 107, too, but Psalm 81, verse 1 and verse 4 right now. Psalm 81, verbally, it means uh, talking and singing, too. I'm including singing under this. Yeah, Matthew even says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So listen to what people are saying, listen to conversations. You can tell what they really, really believe and what's on their heart, what they stand for, all those things. Yeah, where the out of the abundance of heart, the mouth speaketh. You can also, also apply it this way. Out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart singeth, too. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth singeth, yeah. Psalm 81, verse 1. Sing aloud unto God. There we go. Sing aloud unto God our strength, God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. I was a joy, joyful song in the church. We have all kinds, of, and you know music sets an emotion. That's how one way we judge music, by the kind of emotion it brings out. If it brings out a sensual emotion or a carnal emotion, that means it's bad, bad music, not good music. If it brings out a spiritual reaction, uh, it's kind of... Hard to dance to the Rock of Ages, isn't it? <laughs> and if a music makes you want to dance more than read the Bible, then it's a uh, move of flesh more than read the Bible. That's easy to understand. It's fleshly music. Right. Uh, make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. So we need to rejoice musically. We need to have our music that, that uh, praises the Lord. Look at verse number four. For this was a statute for... Israel and the law of the God of Jacob. This is a statute for Israel and the law of the God of Jacob. To have this kind of singing, singing the right kind of music is important. You know, some people, well, everybody, everybody likes songs that that uh, are about what they like. I'm trying to make this clear. Everybody sings songs and they like songs about what they like. Maybe they like the emotion of it. There's a lot of times I, I don't know the the words of a song, but I like the emotion of it because it affects people emotionally. Music is emotion. You've got to control that area. That's a temperance we talked about this morning. you got to control that. In fact, some people need to repent of their music if they're going to even get saved sometimes. Right. Uh, the wrong kind of music. they got to turn from the wrong kind of music and turn to the right kind of music. It's important. But we need to rejoice in the Lord. We celebrate Him by singing songs about Him. Let's see if I can remember the words here. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. We sing songs about Jesus Christ in our church here. It's so important. Verbally, preaching the word of God, talking about Jesus Christ, singing about him, singing about these songs. So we celebrate by talking, we celebrate by singing. It's so important. Say the right thing, sing the right kind of songs. And Psalm 107 verse 1 and 2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Talk about people, witness to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. See, that's again, we give that reference. Psalm 107 verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I like that last part. He redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. So we celebrate. How do we celebrate Christ's resurrection? Verbally preaching, teaching the word of God, witnessing people about it, and we sing about him. That's how we celebrate his resurrection. There's so many songs in our songbook. That talk about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or, I'm sorry, that sing about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And sing about the resurrection. Celebrate verbally, musically. Then also we celebrate with understanding. 
with understanding. There's a great joy when you learn something you didn't know before. There's a great joy when you understand something you never understood before. We were in Nehemiah. Turn back to Nehemiah chapter 8. No, don't turn back there yet. Turn to Psalm chapter 47. See, I'm warmed up today. I'm real. Sometimes my emotion gets ahead of my thinking, though. That's not good. But Psalm chapter 47, verse number 7. Psalm 47, verse 7. Oh, yeah. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises now with understanding. Know what you're singing. Know what you're saying. Have an understanding. Use discernment in your music. For the God is for God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with now with understanding. Don't just sing little things that you don't know what you're saying. Don't sing in Latin, because you don't know what Latin, you don't understand Latin. Uh, don't sing uh, just songs because the words are there. You don't even know what they mean. You don't understand what the royal diadem is. By the way, still sing the songs, and then look up the meaning afterward. But Psalm 47, verse 7, now back to Nehemiah chapter 8. What got them excited here in Nehemiah chapter 8? Something happened to them that got them excited. Something happened to them that they rejoiced. Back to Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 12. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth. There was great joy they had. Because, here's why. Because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. Because they got understanding. I love it when I understand some new, some verses in the Bible that I've never maybe understood before. Never really read it with the understanding that I had at that time. Boy, that brings a great joy in my life. I think, well, that's how that applies. That's how that verse applies to me. I have understanding. I know what it means. I know what it's all about. And the more you understand, the better, the better it becomes. You know, some people, and there's that little saying I put, I think I put it in one of the newsletters. The closer you get... To some people, the more things we become aware of in them to dislike. The closer we get to some people, the more we become aware of in them to dislike. You know, the more you learn about the Lord Jesus Christ, it's just the opposite. Right. The more you admire him, the more you love him, the more you admire, uh, well, admire him, the more, the more you stand back in awe of him. The more you learn about Jesus Christ, the better it is, the better it gets all the time. And we're going to have an eternity to learn more and more about him all the time. Celebrate with understanding. Celebrate with sincerity. Sincerity. We, we don't sing these songs without understanding. We sing these songs sincerely. We know what we're saying when we sing these songs. We need to have sincerity. As a past Protestant, I used to sing songs. I had no idea what they meant. And you know something? Until a person's born again, they can say a lot of things and sing a lot of things that they really don't understand. Because yeah. they're not saved. They can say those things. Uh, they can hear those things, but they don't really understand <laughs> How do Christians, how do we celebrate Christ's resurrection? Not like the world, so different. We're in a different place in the world. The world doesn't come to churches to celebrate their agendas. That's right. They celebrate by show, we celebrate by showing joy. <laughs> Things that make us happy don't make the world happy. Right. Things that make us happy, the world is bored with. Yeah, that's right. That's right. They can't wait to get out of church if they ever get to church. There's no joy there. Christians celebrate with others. That's why the Lord started the church. And he was the foundation of the church, or the, and the apostles were the foundation there. He was the cornerstone. Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. We celebrate verbally and musically with our what, what we say and what we sing about, what our songs are like. We celebrate with understanding. We know what it means to be born again. We know the Lord Jesus Christ. We know the Word of God. We know where we're going someday. And that brings us to celebrate expectantly also. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, we celebrate with great expectation. 
I'm already happy about going to heaven, and I haven't been there yet. I'm already preparing for the party. If we can call it a party. Maybe that's not a good word, party, as a bad connection there. We're preparing for the joy of eternity. Amen. We're preparing for that great worship service up in heaven. Amen. When the millions of people are standing around the throne, praising Him, singing the hallelujah chorus, singing all these songs. Expectantly, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, chapter 2 and verse number 19. I'm tired of this. I'm worried myself out preaching this morning. <laughs> Hope I haven't worn you out listening. Nope. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 19. For what is our hope for joy? There's that word joy or crown of rejoicing. Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ? And what's those last three words? At his coming. When he comes, joy starts. Mm -hmm. Never ending joy starts at his coming. Celebrating some things that haven't happened yet. I'm already getting happy about it. Already preparing for the party. Already getting excited. Already looking forward to all these things. The world celebrates the wrong things, the wrong people, in the wrong way, and the wrong motives. But Christians celebrate the right person. Lord Jesus Christ. Where are you this morning? Where are you this morning? Are you celebrating the right person? Are you celebrating like the world? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Surrender to Him. Understand the Bible definition of believing includes obeying. The Bible definition of the word believing involves obeying. Heavenly Father, please bless now as we, we have a verse of invitation, time of prayer, time for invitation. I pray that people will come forward, pray about things they need to, desire to. Christians come forward, pray about what, whatever their prayer needs are. But maybe there will be one or maybe a couple or several come forward to bow the knee to the Lord Jesus Christ because they've never been really born again yet. They believe on Him, but they're not obeying Him. Lord, please convict them of that, show them of that, that they really need the Lord. Uh, we care about it. That's why we're praying this way. That's why I'm preaching this way. We care about them. Because, Lord, you you care, but you beyond care. You love them. You died for them. So, Lord, meet spiritual needs for those that are saved. Maybe they have prayer requests. Maybe those, and those that are not saved this morning. I pray that really will bow the knees to the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For it is in Jesus' name we ask it.